Hi everyone, this is Priyakshi and today we are going to be speaking with the CEO of NextCharge. So NextCharge, as I am sure most of our readers know, is a JV between India's Exide and Lech Lanche from Switzerland. I hope I pronounced that right. And you did that very well, yes, very well. Okay. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Stefan. And uh, so the JV is aimed at making high performance lithium ion battery packs in India. And the plant is already functional, operational at uh, Prantij near Ahmedabad. So thank you, Stefan, for joining us. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, so uh, why, uh, let's just start with if you could tell us about the current status and scale of operations at Next Charge. Sure. Um, so about uh, a little bit more than a year ago, we, uh, we had, uh, after about two years being in business now, a good idea of what the Indian market needs. And uh, of course, our objective is to cover multiple markets, both in transportation and in industrial markets. Um, so for that reason, uh, we found out that we need both cylindrical cells as prismatic cells as pouch cells, which are basically the three form factors that exist. Because all of these cells are optimized for a certain use case. And since we are offering anything from, you know, an electric cycle all the way up to a submarine, if you like, uh, we need many different types of batteries. So back in December 19, we uh, purchased uh, a number of production lines, six in total, uh, to be able to manufacture batteries with all those cells for all the different applications. Um, it took them through the Corona year 2020, a little bit longer to manufacture those equipment, uh, especially in China, of course, uh, where the problems really started. Um, but anyway, all of the equipment is installed and connected and is uh, fully operational in our facility. We're going to the last steps now of commissioning to scale up the speed of the line. Because typically, if you have highly automated lines, you run them at a lower speed to start with, and then that needs to ramp up. So that's what we're doing now. We'll need a few more weeks to get there, and then we're at full capacity, with, which is if you take an average cell, uh, uh, it'll be around 1.5 gigawatt hours of manufacturing capability of uh, packs. And that is a, a summary of uh, uh, all of the two-wheeler, three-wheeler, passenger vehicle, electric vehicle, and industrial battery pack. So the, uh, I mean, the six lines are for the three types of cells to make them into modules, and then we have two lines to manufacture battery packs, about both low voltage and high voltage. And the sixth line is what we call a finished goods line. That's where we test the capacity of every battery completely before we ship it to a customer. Okay. So I saw a brand video on your LinkedIn channel that says the batteries you're making will, be, will last twice as long as uh, compared to the regular batteries that are available in India. So can you tell us a little bit what goes behind making such long lasting batteries? I'm, I'm very doing? happy you noticed that, yes. So um, there are basically two aspects that you know, a lead to the aging of a battery. One is the intensity of use, also called the depth of discharge. The more energy you take out of a battery, the, the, the faster it ages, of course, because you're using it. And secondly, is the environmental temperature or the battery temperature, which could be higher than the environment if you use it, you know, uh, intensively. So those two things are what you need to control if you want to make your batteries last long. Now, uh, a battery, of course, serves a purpose to offer a range to a vehicle to provide power to someone who, who is out of uh, grid. So um, uh, there's not much you can do about that. If the customer needs the capacity, he's going to use it. That's logical. So the temperature is the only thing you can play with. Now, uh, there's nothing much we can do about the environment. The environment is what it is in India. It's a tropical climate. So, but the increase of temperature over the environmental temperature is something you can influence significantly. And it goes into a lot of details. The emissivity of the battery pack enclosure, the way that the heat is transferred from the cells, which are warming up from using them, and how you transfer that 
to the environment. You can do that slowly and then your cells will get very hot. But if you can take that heat out very fast, which is what we do, then of course uh, the batteries will run cooler. And if you remember from the video that we posted, it's already more than a hundred years that we found out that chemical reactions or certain chemical reactions accelerate with increasing temperature, typically around a factor two um, for every 10 degrees Celsius of increase in temperature. So we've noticed that our batteries run around 15 degrees Celsius cooler than the competitive product. Now that's a lot because that means that uh, the aging of your battery will be less than half of any competitive product. And we've been able to do that through uh, very specific engineering for which we needed special production equipment to be able to manufacture it. That I must say we are the first ones in India to bring that equipment in and install it. And get it up and running. Uh, it's the same equipment. It's not new in the battery industry. It's a proven technology. It's called wire bonding. And uh, you know, every Tesla vehicle has the same wire bonding technology in its battery. They're the only ones to use, uh, as far as I'm aware, cylindrical cells in passenger vehicles. And since their first vehicle, they have been using this connection technique. So we're bringing that to India. There's already uh, uh, a few companies in Asia using it for two wheelers as well. So we'll be using it for two wheelers and three wheelers as well and passenger vehicles if you like. And that really brings the temperature down of the battery, making them last longer. And the nice thing, it doesn't add cost, which is also important for India. Yes, yes, of course. So since we are talking about India specific challenges as a manufacturer, what were the main challenges while setting up the production lines or overall making battery packs in India? I think, uh, you know, ordering machines is not too difficult, but uh, before you can order a production line, you need to know what you're going to manufacture. And to manufacture some product, you need a product design. And before you need a product design, you need to know exactly what it is the customer wants. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, Electric, electric transportation is sort of new to the Indian user, so they don't know exactly what they need. So you need to look more at what is it that they have to do rather than asking the customer what it is they want. That then gives you a product uh, or a product requirement. You can go through design. If you design it, you can uh, set up a production line. So that's the process we have to go through, which takes time. Secondly, I would say talent. There's not too many people in India who have, you know, a decade of experience in designing lithium ion batteries and a lot of technology comes together in the lithium ion battery. So um, when you uh, want to design lithium ion batteries, you need to uh, understand electrochemistry, mechanics, thermal design, electrical design, electronics design, and of course the software. So all of those disciplines uh, need to be well understood. And we needed a lot of time to set up uh, an R&D team that is capable of all those uh, disciplines. Sounds good. Right. And what is the current, so when the uh, JV was initially announced, we read in the press releases that initially the cells are going to be imported from the Germany plant. And later on, you have a plan to manufacture cells also in India. So I would like to understand where that plan is right now. Um, so what is the current level of localization or indigenization in the battery packs you are making? Right. Um, yeah. So we, we really set localization as a target for our company. And um, that's that it, not only because it makes sense, but also because the government supports it that way and sets import duties, et cetera. So um, currently our plant uh, caters only to, uh, you know, pack assembly, which is roughly 35% of the value. And most of that is procured locally and uh, give us another six months. And I think 100% of what we need is pro uh, uh, manufactured uh, in India. Um, the cell itself is still being imported, whether it is from Le Clanche out of Germany or whether it is from China or Korea, because, you know, there's a lot of cell manufacturing going on there. Uh, that, of course, we still don't do locally. You're right, we will get into cell manufacturing, but, um, you know, you have to look at that also from a global point of view. Um, 
you need to set up manufacturing so that it is competitive on a global scale. Otherwise, you're not going anywhere. Now, the global scale for cell manufacturing increases on an almost daily basis. I remember when we were setting up the joint venture just two and a half years ago, we were thinking that a two gigawatt hour plant makes sense and you know is somewhat in line with what is being set up in the world. If you would ask me that question today, I would be saying at least five. Uh, so that's how it goes. And we have found, uh, if you look at the numbers of the cost of procurement of all the materials that are going to lithium ion cell, even going from two gigawatt hours to five gigawatt hours or to 10 gigawatt hours, you do see a significant cost reduction. And again, if you go to the 30 gigawatt hours, which is somewhat a big plant in these days, then again, you see like a 10 to 12% reduction in cost. So those are significant reductions. Okay, if you operate a two gigawatt hour plant and you're competing with someone at a 30 gigawatt hour plant, then you know you're you're, you're going to have a, like a 15 to 20 percent disparity, which which makes it difficult to compete. So you have to think big. And I remember in my initial note to the board, that's what, exactly what I said: think big or go home. And uh, I think that's what we're doing. We've already spent 250 crore on what we're doing now, and we'll be you know investing further into this activity. Now. Um, so the question is not if we go into some manufacturing, it's when. So the second uh, criteria that uh, we have identified is um, if you set up a big facility and you have a market, uh, let's talk firstly about the domestic market that is far below the production capacity of that plant, then you can run it for, you know, if I would set up a five gigawatt hour facility today, I could probably produce everything I need in a whole year in about two to three days. So that plant would be highly inefficient and therefore it would be very, uh, very, very expensive to run. You see, when you start running a line, the first few meters of material is scrap, the last few meters of material is scrap, then you need material to clean the line, you need uh, time to clean the line. So the net uh, 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 output of the line needs to be as big as possible to pay for that overhead. But if you have a small offtake or a small market, then you're producing more scrap than net product. And that means it's not competitive at all. So to run a factory efficiently, you need to run it at least at 50% load. That means if you build a five gigawatt hour plant, you need to have a two and a half gigawatt hour market from day one. Otherwise you'll lose money big time on a daily basis. And nobody likes to do that, right? So um, we, we need to synchronize the market with the construction of the facility, which will take you know, 18 to 24 months. And after the uh, facility is constructed, you still need your, to teach your local people how to use it, which also will take some time. So it, it requires a lot of planning uh, and you know, uh, crystal ball gazing a little bit as well and uh, assessing how the market will develop. So we're not setting up cell manufacturing right now because we feel if we would do it right now, then two years from now, we will be hemorrhaging uh, significantly. Um, and the thing is that our company doesn't need to go through a learning curve as much as some of our competitors may be doing because we of course have Le Blanchet as a very close joint venture partner who started making lithium ion batteries as far back as 2006 in, uh, uh, in, in Europe, and uh, they went to three learning curves. They built three production lines to the one that they have today just to go on the learning curve. So most cell factories, even though if they may announce that they're going to build a 10 gigawatt hour, will start with a 100, 200 megawatt hour line to learn the trade, which is the right thing, the right way to do it, and then ramp up from there. Right. So, uh, so how long have you been, uh, so you've been associated with the JV right from day one, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. From, from uh, incorporation was September 18 and I joined in December 18 on the payroll. I was already trying to do, uh, uh, make things work while I was uh, still working at Le Planche, mm -hmm. uh, where I was for about five years. Okay, I see. So uh, during your time in India, how do you, now how do you see the Indian lithium ion battery market evolve? What trends do you see and what is your prediction forecast for the upcoming couple of years? First of all, I think um, 
it's, it's quite interesting for me to experience it because I've sort of went through it already in the past decade in Europe. I see very, a, lot of, a lot of similarities where there's pioneers and startups that are trying to put stuff together. And uh, at some point, it's a little worrying because um, you want to make sure that the lithium ion industry is a, is a healthy and, and, and well respected and, 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 and uh, cheered industry. And sometimes, you know, lithium ion batteries can be a little bit tricky. And if you don't know exactly what you're doing, it can uh, be risky. So um, we have to be a little bit careful with that. Okay. Uh, now, standards have dramatically improved and uh, demand a certain safety for a product to be put onto the market. ARAI has definitely uh, caught up with that. And uh, I believe that if, uh, if products, uh, and I see that all OEMs really requested uh, to, to make sure that we adhere to the, uh, to the requirements as put forward by the Institute. So I think uh, that is now uh, aligned. Two years ago, that wasn't the case. We were trying to use standards that were made for lead acid batteries and adopt them to lithium ion as well that they were. So, but that is, uh, that is beyond us now. So that's something that has changed. And um, yeah, I think uh, the market potential is huge. It's, Actually, it's quite simple. You, you, you don't really have to think about the market as such, or will it happen or will it not happen? You just have to look at the basics, the economics behind it. Right. If a particular solution works better than an alternative one or the, the, the existing one and offers a lower cost of operations, the market will change. It doesn't matter when you're talking about cassette tapes going to CDs, or whether it's uh, cars going to electric cars. I've, I've been driving an electric car for some time now. And I tell you, once you've driven an electric car and you go back to uh, uh, an, an ICE uh, vehicle, you, you feel like you're going back to the Middle Ages. Seriously, you should try that. And if you have tried it, you, I think you'll confirm. You feel like, oh, this clutch and these gears, what is all this? So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's older technology and it's about to be replaced. And it's going to happen in India as well because the economics fundamentally makes sense. Okay. All right. Um, I think that's all uh, we had uh, like noted down questions. If there is anything else you want to speak about, about next charge or your plans, you're welcome to do so. Well, it, it's very exciting times for us. We are uh, coming out with uh, a lot of new products. Um, and it's, 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 it's uh, I think, a lot of firsts for India as well. Uh, we are uh, working also on our external communications now that we are, uh, let's say, ready to go to the market. And uh, I thank you again for this opportunity, of course, uh, to put our company in the, in the spotlight. Um, but I would say that in general, <laughs> Our organization's values are very much geared towards cooperation because this change from petrol based uh, 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 economy to an electric economy is such a big change that no single company, no matter how big it is, can do it on their own. And uh, so we will need to work together, definitely also in India. So we have a very open innovation kind of culture. So I would like to uh, support and invite all people who are working towards, you know, electrification of transportation and enabling renewables to reach out to us and see how we can work together to, you know, bring cleaner air to the Indian people and, and to the world. 